All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And today, I am very fortunate to have with us Nicole Brenny from Listen to the Stars. So we have done the last session, I guess, summer in November. It's been a long time, wow. and we both were very tight with our schedules. And finally, we managed to get together again. And today, she is going to enlighten us on the topic. Cards of Truth. <laughs> yes, nice to see you today. I, I can't believe it's been that long. Yes, yes, and the view behind is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm lucky I'm staying here for a month and I have this nice river view. And yeah. there's, a, there's so many birds here. I don't think you can hear them through the speaker here, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I also wanted to say that she also has a website and she also has a YouTube channel. So I will pin the link of both of them in the description so if you want a consultation then you can approach her and she's also giving readings on this topic which she's talking going to talk today so the stage is all yours welcome and then let's begin <laughs> all right yeah so today today we're going to talk about the cards of truth and um, I'm just going to kind of tell you the basics of the cards of truth I'm not going to go super in depth um, this is really for my viewers that have been watching me talk a little bit about the cards of truth and for Babajit's viewers that have never heard about the cards of truth at all, and you're like, what is it? <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's kind of something that's floating around the internet, floating around the web. And so I'm not going to go into the, like the super technical stuff. I just want you guys to under get an understanding of what it is, how to use it, and what it's good for. So the cards of truth is, I believe, a name that Ernst Wilhelm has used to describe a system that uses playing cards to predict the future, to read about personalities, and to align the playing cards with astrology. So the cards of truth, if you are like kind of looking around online, you could see something similar labeled as um, the cards of destiny. Our magi cards, there's different names for it, but usually the cards of Dest destiny is probably the most common one that I've seen. Um, but Ernst Wilhelm really studied this system and saw some flaws in it and kind of applied his own logic to it. And he came up with not only like a refined way of reading the cards that's based off of sort of more of like the tr traditional ways of reading playing cards, but also he's come up with a software that looks at your astrology and then applies that astrology to a card system and to what we call quadrations to tell you about your... Um, your birth card, which is like who you are, as well as your destiny and the different potentials of your life. So it's really crazy. So we already have that system. So that system has already been developed. It's basically the birth card and then these planetary cards. It's already existed, but Ernst Wilhelm came, applied his logic to it and refined things in such a way that now we don't just have the cards of destiny or playing cards. We have this system called the cards of truth. And honestly, when I first heard about the cards of truth, I'm being completely honest, I wasn't interested in it at all. I thought it was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, Ernst, thanks. Like, I'm just going to stick with astrology. This just seems like a really crazy thing to learn. And I, I don't have time right now. I'm trying to apply myself to astrology full time. But I came to a point in my life where I asked him advice about something. And he said, why don't you watch a few of these videos? He like sent me the download links to these videos. He's like, just watch a couple of these videos. I feel like you're going to have your answer to your question. It was a relationship question by just listening to these videos. It wasn't like he did a personal reading for me. He just popped into an email, one of the videos from one of the courses he has. And through watching that one hour long video, I was like, oh, my relationship makes sense. I understand what I'm going through. I didn't need to get a reading. I didn't need to ask the cards a question. I just knew based off of the storytelling of the cards. Oh, which he didn't necessarily develop, he just kind of refined um, how to approach this emotional situation in my life. And I kind of have a video that's very similar to that on my Listen to the Stars YouTube page called um, Esoteric Secrets to Love. And it's a, very similar, um, it's a very similar video to the one that he sent me, except for I used my experience and my understanding of working with the cards for a year in that video. So it's a pretty magical system. It's like you don't even have to cast cards to predict. You don't even have to use a system to, to predict the mythology, not the mythology. I want to say like the um, wisdom space of the cards themselves are like really profound. Just the wisdom that each of these cards, it's like basically there's 52 cards in this deck and it's 
what he describes it as and what other authors have described it as is this is like a book of 52 cards and each page or each card in this book has its own set of wisdom. So it's pretty amazing. So when we talk about the cards of truth, we are talking about several different things. We're talking about the wisdom itself. Like if this was like a book and you're reading this book and it has wisdom in it, we're talking about the playing cards themselves that you could cast just like tarot. So you could do different spreads with it. You could, you could ask me a question and I could pull a card for you to answer it. Just like, you know, you can answer a question using any form of divination, like, dowsing rods which i'm really obsessed with right now <laughs> and um i know like i just i just carry these around with me right now because they're what, so what is that, that... <laughs> dowsing rods so like they're used to find water so if i'm like where's the river they can point to the river see how they're pointing to the river oh or i could say is my name baba jeet <laughs> and they said no <laughs> oh, okay right is my name Nicole? Yes. So oh, they just say wow. yes, no, or they can point to things like where is, like, is there an eagle around here? Where's an eagle? And they're pointing towards an eagle. But, but how, how, how that is happening? <laughs> I don't know. They're magical. I'll do a video on them another time, but these are like the coolest, coolest things. My sister-in-law, Marisa, got these for me for Christmas, and I just started using them now. This is related to these cards or... No, I'm just showing like this is another thing. Like basically you can use the cards as a divinatory tool to say yes or no or who, what, where, when, why, and how. So that's one okay. system where you're basically shuffling the deck mm -hmm. and asking questions just like tarot, just like any divinatory tool like dowsing rods, you know, scrying of some kind. Um, then the other thing that when we say the cards of truth, what we're talking about is this software, this system. We're basically using your birth date, time, and location. Every single person in the world has a birth card. And based off of their birth card, they have a spread, a birth spread oh. that is calculated from the birth card. So the birth card talks about the unchanging person that you are. Oh. So as my unchanging person that I am, I'm an eight of diamonds. So oh. being an eight of diamonds, it's actually... Sorry, my nose is running. <laughs> it's so like, it's windy here. So it's like blowing my face around. I thought you um, had some Indian cuisines. <laughs> yeah, I like spicy food. <laughs> I know. Um, so being an eight of diamonds, basically, that's like a card of financial power or um, power in your skills. So during this lifetime, I might deal a lot with money. I might want to have financial power. To me, the eight of diamonds what I've seen it come up as in spreads is like a card of saving money. So that's like also being in a position of financial power when you're really good at saving money. Um, or you could just be really skillful, like a very, very skillful person that's really in tune with their skills and their abilities. So it's a very strong and powerful card. So there's that, only one card you, card you mean, for, like you said there's a spread of cards. Yep. So that's your birth card. And then based okay. off your birth card, there's a whole bunch of different cards and those show different areas of your life. Like there's a bug that flew in my, <laughs> on me. <laughs> Love being outside. Um, like for a woman, their Jupiter card will represent something about their spouse or if it will, oh. if they'll have an easier hard time with men. So I'll show you a couple of different spreads we can look at. I actually just randomly pulled them up. I haven't studied them before, but I'll just kind of show you a little bit about each spread. So when we're talking about the cards of truth, we're also talking about basically like your birth card spread, which if you want to relate it to astrology, it's basically like looking at your astrology chart. And what Ernst Wilhelm has done, which is fascinating, is he's placed the planets into each of these cards. So depending on which card you have, you'll also have planets impacting these cards. And are you familiar with the Lajitati of Ashtas? Uh, yeah, not very much, but. Yeah, it seems like um, tropical Vedic astrologers use them a lot more than um, sidereal Vedic astrologers because they seem to work better with the tropical zodiac. Uh -huh. But using the Lajitati of Ashtas, you can see the fulfillment strength of each of these different areas of life. So are you going to have an agitated time in your relationships? Are you going to feel delighted in your career? Are you going to feel delighted with your children? Are you going to feel starved with your friendship so you can kind of see based off of these avashtas which this is where ernst wilhelm really like brought his special okay. special magic um more detail so 
we're talking about the cards of truth. We're talking about casting cards in the moment. We're talking about literally just your birth card spread and all the different potentials therein. And then if you want to take it a step further, we're also talking about this way of reading each day, almost like a horoscope. So every single day of the year has a birth card or a card associated with it. So every single day there's a prevailing card energy and this is really fun. So anyone that's watching here, if they really don't have any interest in switching from reading their astrology chart to reading their cards of truth chart, one way to get a really fast and easy horoscope is just to know which, which card is running each day. Um, and I actually have a student that created a PDF list of each day of the year and the card associated with it. So if you know how, which each card means, okay, then you'll be able to know what the prevailing energy of the day is. Oh, yeah. And that is specific for every person because the number of cards is limited. I, I think, I think, oh, how is it like? So for the whole world, there's a prevailing card of the day. So for everyone on the planet, depending, like, I don't know exactly based off of where you are, like sunrise and sunset, because we're on opposite ends of the world, Yeah. what day it would be for you. But right now, for me, it's a five of spades day. Okay. Okay. So that means that in general, as like an evolutionary thing, just like we talk about, okay, the full moon is in Scorpio this week. This is what it means Ah. for the entire world. Yes, yes. We can say the same thing. So today is a five of spades day. Okay, okay. No, I thought for every person, for their every day, it's like where planets are transiting as the ascendant. So I was thinking on those terms. They do have that too, though. So you have your birth card spread and then you can progress it. So I'm going to actually just start sharing my screen so that you can see this. And I really hope you guys can see me with this bright sunlight because... Yeah, it's looking beautiful. I wanted, I wanted to be outside today. So here we're just looking at basically if someone was born today, this would be their birth card spread. Oh. Okay. Actually, I'm going to switch to um, Bob Dylan. So it's not so confusing. So when you get the software, which I will maybe comment in this video with some links to the software so you guys can buy it if you want. It's not expensive. Mm-hmm. But when you open up your Cards of Truth software, it will look like this. Is it available for Mac also? No, but if you get a basically okay, can use through crossover. Wine bottler. Yeah, Wine Bottler is great. That's a good one. So, okay, I can't use my mouse for some reason. Oh, here we go, annotate. I need my spotlight. You know what, never mind, okay. For some reason, Zoom isn't letting me use my cool pointer that I always use, but when you first open up your software, it's gonna look like this. Uh And then if you just click on a card, this is what I'm actually reading, is you click on this card and your birth card spread pops up. So right here in the upper left-hand corner, this is your actual birth card spread. So when we talk about the cards of truth and I talk about doing a cards of truth reading, I'm essentially talking about looking at this card spread and reading about your life path, your destiny, who you truly are, and all the potentials therein. So it's kind of similar to like looking at a birth chart, right? You're like, okay, your ascendant is kind of like how you project yourself onto the world. Your sun and your amakarka is kind of like your soul. Your moon is your emotions. We can kind of break up the birth chart into these different areas if we really wanted to, right? Okay, so uh, if suppose somebody doesn't know anything about astrology, then also they can uh, get in tune with the system or you must know something about astrology. It's extremely helpful to know about astrology because as you can see, you have a birth card. Then you have a sun card, a moon card, oh, okay. a Mars card, all the way through Pluto. So Ernst Wilhelm is kind of a neo-Vedic astrologer in a lot of ways. So he has used the outer planets. Uh-huh. And within these cards, you have the cusps. So the oh, first okay. house cusp, the, you know, where's the first house cusp? Right here. Oh. Um, you have the second, fifth, sixth, third, seventh, ninth house cusp. So, you know, you might want to take a whole course on what is a house cusp. Mm -hmm. to understand that like what does the first house represent so that's going to be helpful and what what do all the planets mean just to read them within 
a card themselves. So when I'm teaching my course coming up, we will be studying the planets in depth because then every one of my students will understand which each card means, right? But to back it up, if you're just casting cards in the moment okay. with a deck, you don't need to know anything about the planets except for to allow you to go deeper with the different numerology of the cards because every single card through numerology is related to a certain planet. Uh huh. Right? So in the system I've learned, which I know is different from other numerological systems and other astrologers, the planet uh, Saturn rules over the number seven. Mm -hmm. So understanding Saturn's relationship to restriction, to boundaries, to separation, and the heart's relationship to emotional situations, I can understand quite easily that the seven of hearts has to do with restriction, boundaries and separation, maybe in relationships or with an emotional situation in general, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing astrology helps, but it's not necessary. If you're casting in the moment, if you want to learn this system, I'm like, I'm just thinking you would probably want to, you would have a real handicap if you didn't know it. Okay, nice. And astrology to the level of just knowing about the planets. Like, I've been doing these makeover videos on my channel. I don't know if oh. you've ever seen them yet. Yes, yeah, the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just did the sun. I mean, even if you just watched my makeover videos, which are like less than 20 minutes long, um, and they describe the qualities of the planets, like that could be enough information for you to know about the planets. Maybe watch, I usually do, when I do those videos, I usually do a makeover video an all about the planet video and a day of the week video relating the planet to the day of the week. If you just watched those three videos, you would know enough about the planets to easily support your understanding of the cards. Yeah, so, so basically there's not much detail or very high level required astrological knowledge to understand this. Okay. Yeah. Right. As an entry level, like as an entry point, no. If you want to go deeper absolutely learn more like i know people my friends that have studied jaimini astrology that know the cards of truth they can pull out a lot of crazy details because they understand different planetary combinations in relation to career in relation to number of children because mm -hmm. jaimini is so amazing for that kind of stuff so anytime that you understand more about astrology and apply it to the cards now you're getting to some kind of a crazy level Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So learning astrology will never hurt you with this system. And as we have dashas and all these systems, so like when will this person get married or when this person will get a job? So is there something of that sort also here? Um, yes, I just dropped a card. So this is going to be the card that I read for everyone watching. You have to pick it up. <laughs> um, yes, so... I personally combine the cards of truth with Vedic astrology. So if I know that someone's running moon dasha, then their moon card becomes more important to me, right? Okay. Um, so I look at it in this way, but let me show you how we kind of do um, time periods in this system. And I'm going to take I'm going to take us out of Bob Dylan because Bob Dylan has a fixed card as his card. So. I can't explain a, an important thing in here. I know you guys don't know what a fixed card means, but it's just a little bit more complex to look at. So we're going to look at Paul Simon. Mm -hmm. and what are these names? These are some types of areas or just some names of people or their cards. So Paul Simon is a musician. He's a really cool musician. Um, like he's like one of the most famous musicians in the U.S., and he was born, was he really born in 19, this doesn't make any sense, but I feel like this is not the right birth date. I don't know how he would be 89. <laughs> Let me use Madonna's or Can Rao's. Let's use Can Rao's. I'm going to have to look at Paul Simon's birth date because that seems crazy. Can Rao, he would be 86, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, that makes sense. I really doubt that Paul Simon is that old. I know his son and his son is like my age. Okay, so um, K and Rao. Okay, so with time periods with the cards of truth, we do it by progression. So, are you familiar at all with Western astrology? Uh, not much. <laughs> okay, so Western astrology often will do progressions, and basically, 
um, this is going to sound really crazy and I might seem really spacey, but I just remembered a dream that I had like six years ago about playing cards before I studied oh. playing cards. Isn't that weird? Mm. I just remembered it now. It was like a destined thing. Okay. Isn't that weird? Okay, so deja vu there for a second. But basically, in progressions, you shift the birth chart forward based off of the time a person was born. Mm -hmm. um, and you're basically just progressing or moving the chart forward. And then you're reading the chart from that forward position um, as a way to predict what's going on at that time for a person. So as you shift the chart forward so for instance like one year there's one kind of progression where for each year you shift the chart and every single planet forward by one degree you would read the planet as that for that particular year so say that you used to have your moon in Taurus well at a certain age your moon will go into Gemini so a lot of people that were born as moon in Taurus they get into their 30s and all of a sudden they're moon and Gemini. So that means emotionally they start relating more um, with people. On, they want more of an intellectual sort of connection with someone. They want to be able to relate in a friendly sort of way with their partners. And then as they get into their 40s, when their moon shifts into cancer, now mm -hmm. they want more of like an emotional connection. So you see how progressions work. It's like... So it you will just always go shift. ahead. It will never go back. Yeah. Well, I believe the nodes go backwards. <laughs> I believe that's how it works. I don't work exclusively with um, progressions or anything like that with Western progressions, but that's how it works. So yeah, mm -hmm. like for instance, um, like a person with sun and cancer when they're born in their thirties, they could become a sun in Leo. So then that means Whoa. that like all of a sudden they might really feel the need to perform and be out there in the world, even though when they were a kid, they were like really shy, you know? Uh -huh. Okay. So I think progressions are pretty amazing. I've looked at um, a few different types. I've actually studied a few different types. I just don't use them that often where I know all the specific details, okay. but they are amazing. They, you can predict incredible things with progressions. Uh -huh. and so using cards of truth progressions, it's kind of insane. It's kind of insane the level of detail and what the cards can do. And because every single person on earth has a birth card attached to them, you can make specific predictions related to people in your life. Oh, okay. So instead of dashas, what we do is, you know, we cut a person's whole life down into seven-year periods. Okay. So zero to seven, eight to 14, whatever that would be. Um, for instance, Ken Rao, when we zoom in on his life, his seven-year period right now uh -huh. would be between ages 84 and 90. Okay. So instead of being a 10 of clubs, he's progressed through the cards to the point where now he's a 10 of diamonds. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Oh, it's like that shifting of the planets. This is also shifting. Yes. And I think the mathematical way it's done is different. And unfortunately, I'm one of these people that's terrible. I'm very terrible at explaining mathematical processes. <laughs> but... Um, the process that is used is called a quadration mm -hmm. and I'm not sure of the exact patterning that is followed, but it's scientific. It's not random. There's no random pattern here. So if you were born on the same date and time and place as an individual, you would have the same progression. It would follow the same order. Okay. Okay. So Kan Rao is now a 10 of diamonds and now the prominent energy he's going to be experiencing in each part of his life. Like Mars is his willpower. Mercury is a way that he balances his life. Jupiter is, um, could be his children, his philosophies, his teachers. All those things are going to be more specifically geared towards these energies opposed to these energies. So they're not the same cards. So the energy is going to be slightly different. So, you know, have you ever seen these people... Maybe it's not as common in like, you know, overseas as it is here, but there's these people like these women, for instance, that they get married after high school, they have a family, they raise their children. And then when they're in their late thirties, early forties, they get divorced and all of a sudden they 
dye their hair blonde and they're on Facebook taking pictures in skimpy outfits. <laughs> like, you know, they're, they're just like trying, their whole life changes and they just become someone that they've never been. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yes, yes. I have some examples. <laughs> yes, there's some examples out there. So basically, things can happen that drastically because you step into a new energy. So this is kind of like the personality that you are for a period of time versus your unchanging, always being the same person. Okay. Okay, so this is the energy that you're in now. So for instance, I'm an eight of diamonds. And the energy that I'm in right now, so the eight of diamonds is a card of like financial power and success um, and all that. Right now I'm in the king of diamonds card. So also the eight of diamonds is about being really like successful with your skills, right? So the king of diamonds card is really about being able to make the sacrifices necessary in order to become successful. Mm -hmm. So this can be financial sacrifices. This can be time sacrifices. It's mostly a sacrifice of a skill of some kind. Mm 